Hi all, welcome back to the channel and something a little bit different today. I was contacted by Creality and they wished to send me one of their new mini 3D scanners. It's a consumer level 3D scanner, which I believe attaches to your phone, though I really don't know what this looks like. Um, but I really do like the company Creality. I have one of their 3D printers and I've always wanted a 3D scanner. So of course I jumped at the chance and all we're gonna do is just kind of see if we can fit it into a pipeline, just do some cool stuff with it and see how it works. I'm gonna unbox this on video so we can take a look at it together. Okay then, so let's take a look at this. Oh, cool, so it comes in a nice little case. I didn't expect that. That's a really nice quality case as well. We've got the instruction manual. So it looks like we have the actual scanner. Reminds me of a webcam type style thing. It's got some weight to it, feels good quality. And we have the tripod for it. And uh, looks like it has the battery on that as well. Yeah, the power bank, which doubles as a grip. That's pretty cool. And we've got the attachments for it. So it looks like this piece is for your mobile and this one clips on top and that holds the camera. And we've got a host of various cables, chargeable cable for the handle and smartphone and a cable for the computer. Mm, this is a nice construction. This is solid steel. Yeah, oh, that's satisfying. Look at that nice little red clip. I really like the quality of this. Okay, so I think it goes something like this. So you put your mobile phone in there and plug it into the 3D scanner so that you can see what it is you're scanning. The scanner comes equipped with a special depth calculation chip developed by our company to quickly process volumetric data on the device itself, reducing the computational requirements for both mobile phones and PCs. As a result, scanning becomes a smoother experience. So this is for large and medium sized stuff. The scanner is also equipped with a high resolution RGB camera that supports color scanning. And also, the dog is dreaming, which is the cutest thing. Look at his little feet twitch. Good boy, little Otis. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, high resolution RGB camera that supports color scanning. The resulting models can be directly used for 3D printing without any further processing. Right, so the next step for me here is to find an old mobile phone, get it charged up, that I can use in here. And then we've got to try and find something to scan. So I'll probably just do a few tests. Bear in mind, I am not technical. I am not a 3D scanner or a 3D printer. I'm just a, a humble modeler. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of trial and error for me. But I guess that's good. I mean, most people will be just, uh, most people should be able to to purchase one of these. So uh, I'm kind of a good person to be doing this, I guess, because uh, because uh, because I'm a fool. And if a fool can use it, then anybody can use it. Let's give it a go. I forgot to do one thing on my unboxing video for this Creality 3D scanner. And look, it's this. Oh. So as it's really sunny in the UK at the moment, I thought I'd do my first tests outside. Now initially this went terribly and I was really disappointed, but after speaking to Creality, it turns out it was my own fault. And they have sent me this really handy guide to the kind of things you should choose when filming outside. So since then I have been to the beach to scan some stuff and I'm really excited to show that. However, halfway through I smashed my phone, so that's gonna be a bit of a delay in that. So for now, I'll show you what I did attempt to scan outside and then some of the successes I had immediately after that. The first thing I tried to scan was this fire pit. After messing around with the settings for ages, my newbiness prevailed and I just couldn't get it to scan in. So I tried something that you see often, which is a log. Again, I just couldn't get it to scan in. And then I followed this with the Doom Gnome, which I already knew this wasn't gonna work. It's painted black and so it's very hard for the scanner to pick that up. Whilst going through the settings, I noticed that there was an option to scan a face or even a body. So naturally the next thing I attempted was to clone my girlfriend. 
So my first attempts at this were again failures and I was in agony because I'd hurt my back before. You can see I've got a back strap on underneath my t-shirt. I tried moving her to the shadows, still nothing. And then in my frustration, I tried going into the kitchen and amazingly it worked so well and I finally got some great scans. And you might be thinking, well, there's a lot of errors in that. And there is, but they're mainly my errors. It was an awkwardly sized room to do this in. And it's also made a smoosh of her face, but that's okay because there's a face scanning mode and you can composite them together later on. Now I didn't film that successful scanning. So I've recreated what happened and I'm using this scruffy little Teddy as an accurate representation of my girlfriend. You can see here, I've just turned this on and straight away it's picking up that uh, dog toy. So if I hit start, and then I've also set up a light here as well because I find that uh, any kind of shadows, darker areas just isn't being picked up at all. So you need to get as much coverage as you possibly can. And then once you're done, you hit next. Mesh will be optimized. So there's three parts to that, the optimization, the meshing, and if you've selected textures, it'll add the color to it as well. And bam, we have a full 3D realistic model. So now my mood has flipped from frustration to excitement because I can see the potential of this. And now I really want to make a proper asset. So I've got this see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil carving that I picked up years and years ago. It's a little bit dusty and it's got some nice texture to it. It might be a little bit dark, I'm not quite sure. It's got some bright spots and dark spots. So what I've done is I've got my various ring lights and stuff and I've set them up around it to kind of even out the, the shadows. But this time I've got it set up on my PC. So you can see in the background here, this is the application. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So you've got three uh, sections at the top, device, scan and process. The device is plugged in. So I'm gonna to go to scan. So the settings I'm gonna use here is normal, uh, medium. And for feature, I'm gonna hit geometry. I think texture is for if you need tracking markers on something. And then we want high quality and also color to generate our texture map. Right then. So you can see just in the corner here, we have the two, uh, the, the camera and the IR. So you can see it detecting the surface. So when the model is red, it means it can't see it. When it's green, it's at the right distance and it'll start tracking it from there. So cool little uh, slider here that tells you how well you're currently doing. I think we hit play here, start. And then as it finds green bits, it starts committing that to memory. So it needs to look at what it's already scanned in order to, to know where to place the new points. So you need to move around fast. If you suddenly go around to the back, it doesn't know what it's looking at anymore. So you need to find a piece that you've already scanned and then move slowly around it. It's really hard to move from the side plane to the bottom. It just doesn't seem to be able to track or place that bottom plane of this plinth. I mean, I guess we don't really need it, but still, as soon as I try to move around, it loses it. Let's try and zoom out a bit. No, oh, it really doesn't want to get the bottom of that. So I'm just being careful not to get my hand in it. I don't want my hand to become a part of this. Turning the model instead of the camera means that it, it's got more even light because the light's gonna be the same as you turn it around. Because you don't really want shallow information in this. Uh, it, it limits what you can do with it, especially if you're going to relight it in a scene. You want the diffuse texture to be as free from shadows as possible. Then you can add in your own shadows or bait lighting or ambient occlusion. Um, but really, for, for the raw thing, you want it to be as even toned as possible. It's a shame you can't get like a digital tracker that you can plug on it, a gyroscope, so it knows which way up it is. And then it could, uh, I guess, orient the object in space a lot easier. Now, the difficulty is the gaps in this. I'm not really gonna be able to get in there. I guess there's a lot of shadow in there as well. This is pretty cool. Just to see this object build up and exist in a 3D space that didn't. You also have bits of my hand floating around that as well. Hopefully those pieces will, will disappear once it's built. So it's just, this is just a point cloud now. There's actually a lot more information than just these points, I think. Um, but this is just the points that it's showing. I think this is nearly done, I would say. Let's see if we can get his butt again. Gotta get that butt. Um, but that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna leave that there. Let's uh, complete scan. Yes. Okay, so this is now complete and I've 
got to say, I'm, <laughs> I'm really impressed. I didn't expect it to be this clear. I mean, the, the diffuse map is a lot brighter than the actual uh, the actual model, but I guess that's because there's no lighting in here, and also it was so evenly lit, so there's just no shadows. There's a few holes in the mesh, like the bottom of it didn't manage to mesh. Um, and obviously underneath there's a hole, but there isn't in the top one. Oh yeah, there is a little bit. Oh no, there isn't in the top one. I'm really surprised it's managed to get like so well underneath here. This is this is really cool. This is really impressive. What? Wow. Look at this around the edges here. It's so clean. This whole model is just boom right there. Exactly like it is in real life. So I really wanted to see this rendered a little bit more nicely. So I quickly exported it as an OBJ and dropped it into Marmoset Toolbag. And it did come in upside down and way too big with a pivot point off to the side somewhere. So it was a little tricky to scale into place, but then drop some lights in, put the texture together. Bear in mind, it's only a diffuse map. There's no roughness or metallic or normal map or anything like that. But even with just the diffuse map and the mesh, the results were, well, they blew me away. With only a diffuse map, a few minutes work setting up some lights and this looked photorealistic. There has no, been no cleanup on this. I mean, the mesh is super dense. There's holes all over it. There's little bright spots in the diffuse map, but still it looks this good. So it does make me wonder how long it would take to quickly clean this up, remesh it and rebake it for a usable asset. I mean, look at this guys. Look at that model. <laughs> the real thing here. It's, it's like I've taken a photo of it, but now I can place this in, in, in any position I want. And this is a full model and textures good enough to, to do any renders with, um, and even 3D print. And yet it's, you know, I was running a bath when I started scanning this in, and the bath isn't full yet, and yet I've already got this full complex model with textures into a scene, rendering really nicely in, in minutes. I mean, I was a bit skeptical at first, but this is really cool. It just feels really cool to, to see this actually happen. It's just an odd, you know, maybe it doesn't come across on camera, but it's really weird to have something in your hand and then minutes later is now a full 3D object. I'm surprised how impressed I am at this. Maybe I'm just really easy to, to impress, but yeah, I do like this a lot. I mean, this gives me some ideas, actually. I might need to do a second video. Yeah, I'm going to do a second video, maybe do some cool things and print them. I think that would be that would be the best bet. So the last thing I want to show you guys is I decided to qu very quickly clean up the model. So that's clean up the high poly, remesh it as a low poly, unwrap it, get it into Painter, generate some normal maps, generate some better wood textures, get some roughness values in there. Now I'll probably do a separate video for just this process so people can follow that themselves if they want to do the same thing. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see that, then please like and subscribe. It really does help me grow this channel. Here are the results of the new, I guess, kind of very quick game ready mesh. And bear in mind, this only took me, say, an extra hour on top of the uh, final scan mesh that you just saw. So I'm really happy with this. It looks really nice. And I just can't imagine doing this any other way without spending, you know, a day or so working on this. This took about an hour and a half in total. It is phenomenal and I can't wait to do some more stuff. I've got some ideas and I want to try out some 3D printing stuff as well. So stay tuned for the next video on, on this new little toy. Thank you for watching.